today it's just me having a really talk about what most people get wrong about color grading and then I'm also gonna give you some hopefully helpful advice. advice. The truth is and people always think that the color grading is crazy, like what you do is crazy and it can be obviously but most of the time we just see the final result, right? So you have to understand and also accept this. Pro colorists work with pro cinematographers that know their stuff and it already looks good on camera. Also they're using high-end tech cameras with great dynamic range, codecs and color bit depth. But that's not all, they also have great production design and wardrobe which already is the fundamental for the color palette. And this is where the look development already happens. And colorists usually try to get involved into that early process. Of course that's not always the case, but the production design, the right wardrobe and lighting already makes 85% of the final image and therefore also the color look. And then I remember that it's okay, I'm not there yet. I'm not being served yet by these crazy good cinematographers and production designers, nor do I have that much experience in color grading yet. Also you have to stop comparing yourself to that, because you don't even have the same footage that they have, so you can't even make it a fair play when it comes to comparison, right? And also you don't have that much experience that they have. Trust the process, it takes time. I also trust the process. I know it sounds like I already am there, but no, it sometimes might not seem like you make any progress, but then if you actually rewind, it's definitely there, you're making progress, or at some point it might be even exponential. The amount of time and work you have to put in to make something look good or for people to to just not notice that something is off is just crazy and people don't get enough credit for that because you have to do so many little adjustments for people just to not notice anything weird to give them a solid natural looking image. So much happens backstage you only always get to see the final result um, so please don't hate anyone's work. People often ask me, what's your process? What, what do you actually do in color grading? What should I start with? Well, I don't know what you want to do to your image. It's pretty much subjective. On the other hand, I also don't know what pro colorists are doing to their footage. I can only guess because you barely get these insights, right? So my advice would be because I don't know what level you are on. And it also doesn't make sense for me to do exactly what pro colors do because I also don't have the knowledge and the experience. So this might also apply to you and therefore the advice that I'm gonna give is timeless. First of all, get familiar with the basics. People don't realize how much you can actually do with just the basics. Know your color theory, know your scopes, know your program because that's where the magic happens. If you're good at this, you can do the job. What I'm trying to say here is stop focusing on the look, that's for later. I should also mention that having a great perception and sense for colors is also a requirement for good color grading. And even if it's a subjective form of art, you just have to know what looks good, what looks decent, but I I wouldn't worry about that because that's also gonna come from time to time. Less is more, you can and should experiment, but that doesn't mean that it's gonna turn out great. If it does, awesome. My recent experiment actually worked, where I basically had to redesign the entire scene by changing the green walls and all to a nice deep blue. Because it didn't serve the story and also the director gave me a reference where it was bluish from the mood. So this experiment was basically me fixing things because yeah, that normally would be something from the production design, right? And I was scared it wouldn't work 
because I knew it was such an aggressive grade. As a colorist you always have to improve the image and by just color balancing the image, also by reshaping the light to enhance and emphasize the lighting in your scene. A good check mark for you is to always toggle your node that you're working in to see if it actually makes a good impact to the footage. But you always need to know what you're doing, so if you're doing it wrong or simply it's too much of this ingredient, then better don't do it. I would also look into reducing colors. What colors do you want to be more pronounced? What colors should be less featured? Pull them out. And if you don't know what I mean, HSL or Color Warper. Moving on, always have a healthy sitting image, so don't clip anything in your scopes. Also, there's nothing wrong with using LUTs, except if they're crap, then don't use them. But in general, they're just really a help. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, like the Kodak 2383 or some other film print emulation or even some looks that you got from your favorite creators. I finally accepted it myself. I used to avoid using LUTs or buying LUTs because I wanted it to be my work and I was being so ambitious and I didn't allow any help to do it or I considered using LUTs as cheating. So I also was really ambitious to learning it myself to do looks on my own, which to be honest also wasn't too bad because that's how I finally got to do it on my own to really learn look development and I'm still learning I'm not finished yet because I think it still needs more and it used to be hard I think it's still hard to learn about look development because there's not much on YouTube or pretty much anywhere else especially then, back then, these videos were, at the end, they were just gonna sell you their lot, which was, yeah, you know what it is. Although they probably didn't even know what they were doing either, but fake it until you make it. But no, it's still your creative work, even if you're using a lot or just for base, but then make sure it is actually a good lot and also make sure you're using it the right way. Maybe for the end, let's do a quick example on Dutch and Burn. I think I mentioned it earlier, not by Dutch and Burn, but by reshaping light. This is simple and subtle, but if you see the before, huge difference. Here without having it reshaped, the transition didn't really work, simply because the light wasn't the same. And that's where you're cinematography skills come in handy put nag or put bounce right and you do that basically in the windshield resolve by using power windows you darken the one window and then you darken the other one but do it right i really hope this one was valuable to you i actually wanted to do one about cinematography but my head just couldn't make space for it since i spent the past month only color grading. Anyway, subscribe if you haven't already. Also give me a thumbs up. It would really help with the algorithm. And if you made it until the end, I appreciate you for your time and thanks for coming. And I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye.